Hi everybody. Um, this is a video on uh, the Heart Sutra, on the title of the Heart Sutra, and in particular how to write the ten characters of the Heart Sutra uh, in uh, classical Chinese characters. Um, now, uh, the pronunciation that uh, that I'll be using in this class to, to go along with the characters is the Sino-Korean pronunciation. That is, that's the way that uh, Korean people pronounce these characters. Of course, my Korean is uh, heavily accented. So if you're a native speaker of Korean, uh, my apologies. Um, uh, in in uh, Korean, the Chinese characters are referred to as hanja, which is how I'll often be referring to these characters. Um, so let's just jump right in and um, start looking at uh, Instead of talking about, let's look at uh, the Heart Sutra in written in traditional uh, Chinese characters or Hanja. And uh, this is a, a web application. It's available. Uh, here's the URL up here. I will also have that uh, in uh, the description to the video. You can go directly to it. Um, although I say directly to it, when you first come to this uh, uh, website, uh, if I hit the refresh button, this will actually, uh, this is what you first see when you come to it. Uh, what's being displayed here is uh, Master Wee Song's uh, Song of Dharma Nature. Oh, yeah. As it says here, when you, when you hover over the title, Master Wee Song's Song of Dharma Nature. Uh, so there are different uh, selections that you can make. Uh, including looking at the, the four vows, the 10 ox herding pictures. Here's, this is the, these are the poems that go along with the 10 ox herding pictures. Um, uh, and if you, this is the first three uh, numbers in Chinese characters are not that hard to make out, are they? One, two, three. Um, but I invite, uh, encourage people to play around uh, with this website. I'll look at the other, um, uh, things that you can explore, uh, some of which are uh, some of which are still very much in the development stage. Uh, uh, everything in, the, in this web application is still in the development stage, but the the Heart Sutra is uh, pretty um, well, it's further along than it, than everything else. Um, so anyway, so now what's being displayed here is the text of the Heart Sutra. Uh, there are two hundred and seventy. Uh, characters being displayed here in this uh, field over here on this side of the page. Uh, you can click on any of these characters and 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 learn more about them, which is what we're going to do specifically with the ten characters here uh, in the title. Now, uh, this is not the first uh, uh, video I've made. This is part of a series of videos um, uh, that's part of a, a series of classes that I'm teaching online. Uh, we meet uh, once a month on the first Saturday of the month. We've only had two class meetings so far. If you're interested in joining in on those classes, um, you can do so by, go by going to my uh, Patreon page. Um, it's, you know, it's like $2 a month to attend the classes, so I don't feel like that's going to be um, uh, uh, too much to ask. Um, but... Uh, and besides, the videos, the, the classes are recorded, and I post them all on YouTube afterwards. In addition to posting the recordings of the live classes, I'm also making supplementary uh, videos, at least one uh, for every lesson. Uh, so we've had two lessons so far, and in those lessons we have, in theory, uh, uh, covered the first ten characters of the Heart Sutra and all of the components, which is uh, important to We've taken uh, each of these characters apart. In this uh, video, I'm going to go through one at a time each character and look at how they're how the character uh, the, the characters are written, how they're pronounced, and what they mean. And I'm also going to look at their components and how the components are written, and how the components are pronounced, and what the components mean. Um, some of this has already been covered, and in particular, the first five characters have been covered somewhat in the previous videos. 
Uh, so in this video, I'm going to cover those a little more quickly and then uh, spend more time on the final five uh, characters, six through ten. Uh, but let's start at the beginning. Let's start with Ma, right? So when you when you hover over any character, here I'm doing it one character at a time in the in going through the whole title, right? Ma, Ha, Ban, Ya, Ba, Ra, Mil, Ta, Shim, Gong. So one thing that you'll notice is that sometimes when a character is clicked on, uh, other characters in the Heart Sutra also become highlighted. So the character that, that you click on becomes highlighted. It, uh, the uh, character itself is written now in yellow against a dark background, uh, as opposed to being written in black with the, with this kind of aqua. What color is this? I think it's aquamarine or something like that. Um, uh, but in, when I click on Ma, it, uh, nothing else happens. Just Ma is displayed, and then there's some information that's displayed over here, some other information that's displayed down here, and uh, a large version uh, of the character is displayed here, but nothing else. But when I click on Ha, well, here we see Ha occurs in two places. And so it's highlighted in both of those places. It occurs once as the second character in the title and as the final character in the mantra. The mantra is Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
and Gyeong, which is the um, a Chinese word for sutra, uh, only shows up in the title and isn't a component of anything else. So let's go back to this again. So um, uh, Ma has three primary components. And this has already been covered previously, so I'm going to go through this more quickly. Uh, this is uh, Guang. This is Rim. And what I'm doing is going back and clicking on the character again. Um, and this is Su. So notice that every time I click on a component of this character, see here, now I'm clicking on the character. Then I'm going over here into this field down here and clicking on one of its components. And then now the character is highlighted uh, as a character that contains the character that I've clicked on, which is Guang. But look, there's another character in the Heart Sutra, which also contains Guang, which is, this is Du, um, the character, uh, well, let's see, let me click on it. This is Du, actually in, in, in Korea, the Sino-Korean is pronounced Do. This is a character for save or ferry across. Um, this is a, a character that's also encountered in the, um, uh, the Four Great Vows. All right, so the character Ma has three main components. Two of those can be broken down further into subcomponents. I'll let you look at the previous videos to, to learn about that. Um, but uh, uh, Guang, Rim, and Su. And then uh, you can look at how each of those are, are drawn or written. Uh, this is the, the, the whole character. One, two, three. The first three characters are Guang. The next eight characters are Rem, which is just two repetitions of the character Mok, which is the character for a tree. And then the final four characters are the character for Su, or hand. And one of the things that um, is illustrated very nicely in these um, stroke order animations down in the green box uh, uh, here is uh, that the direction of the strokes uh, is important to know. Uh, the top stroke goes from right to left. The next two strokes go from left to right. And then the final stroke goes from top to bottom. Right to left, left to right, left to right, top to bottom. Okay, so Ma has been covered in previous videos. I'm going to move on to the next character. Um, this character, which is Ha. Uh, now here, uh, whenever I click on a character, a lot of the main, a lot of the information about that character is displayed uh, here, up here in this area that I'm indicating now. Um, first thing that's shown after the character itself is it's uh, a Mandarin pronunciation as, as, as spelled out or written out in pinyin. Uh, the location just shows uh, how many times it appears in the Heart Sutra and also will indicate uh, it appears five times in the Heart Sutra where it's pronounced Ha. It uh, will also might indicate if this is a uh, character is found elsewhere. Ha is actually found uh, in, so anytime Anytime you have a mantra in Chinese, mantras often end in sabaha, which is the Chinese pronunciation of sivaha in Sanskrit. Um, and so this actually appears in many different places, but I haven't updated uh, this to, to reflect that in the database. Um, it has 12 strokes. Its pronunciation is ha. It's also sometimes pronounced as ga. And so the uh, I, where, where I give the Korean pronunciation, uh, here, I also show the, um, the Hangul, um, the meaning, which is on the next line, meaning, meaning, here, see, meaning, uh, for, for most of the characters in the title, they're actually being used for their phonetic value and not for their actual semantic meaning, uh, but, so I say, as far as the meaning goes, sometimes it just means the sound means to make this sound, make the sound ha. But also the, the character can in other context, contexts mean blame, scold, or abuse. 
Uh, the radical uh, for this character is un. If we go back to the previous character, the radical information was also provided for ma, which is uh, su. So er radicals always have a number um, because they're actually used to organize characters in, in, a, in a native Chinese dictionary. The characters will be organized by their uh, radical. And then uh, uh, since many characters have the same uh, radical, then the, the next way that they're organized is by how many additional strokes there are in addition to the um, radical. So the radical Su has four strokes. Um, the character Ma has 15 strokes altogether. So here we say it has radical 64 plus an additional 11 strokes, all right? Back to um, Ha. Uh, this character has two main components, which have already been covered, but I'm gonna look at them real closely, real quickly now. Un, which means words or speech, and is written like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the second component of uh, ha is um, ga, uh, which is written like this. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. So seven plus five is 12. So the um, uh, the whole character has uh, the same number of strokes as you get when you sum up the strokes and its components. And in this case, the components are, um, you know, there's a left component and a right component. And you have these two uh, goos that are right next to each other the little boxes are the goo components so if you take if you take um the un component or the ga component if you take those apart into their components you'll find that they each have a one goo component let's just well since i'm talking about it there's goo one two three and notice that the second stroke of goo is it, it changes directions. In fact, it, it, um, it changes direction um, at right angles. Uh, but it's one stroke because you don't lift your your pen or your uh, Sharpie uh, when you're writing. Um, that's what I usually use when I'm practicing my characters. Um, and since you don't lift the pen or the brush or the pencil or whatever it is that you're writing with, it's a single stroke. All right, so that's ha, and ha has also been covered uh, in previous videos as well. Um, ban, now this is a, uh, a, a character that again, it's being used here in the title of the Heart Sutra for its phonetic value, um, but uh, it can also mean uh, a carrier to carry all, it has lots of different meanings, and that, that's, um, uh, important thing to to know about Chinese characters is that their their meaning is highly uh, dependent upon uh, their context. Um, ban has two components, uh, ju, which means boat or ship, and su, su, which is exactly the same uh, pronunciation as the character for hand. Uh, this is a character for tool, weapon, lance, handle of a hubbard. Notice, that, well, I mean, it, it's probably no coincidence that these are all things that you uh, hold in your hand. Uh, and uh, this character is a radical. It's radical number 79. So very often uh, when we look at the components of a character, uh, those components can themselves be uh, radicals. And so, uh, uh, however, even though um, a, uh, a, a component or a character can be a radical. The character itself can only have one radical. So uh, is that confusing? It's a little confusing, isn't it? Um, uh, this is covered in the, um, uh, you know, in the, in the class somewhat, but let, let me just reiterate a few things about radicals. Um, all radicals are either, um, well, all radicals are characters. 
or sometimes they are special component forms of characters. So, um, yeah, I don't want to get too involved in that, but a, 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 a radical is either a, a character in its own right or it's a component form of a character. Uh, but not all components are radicals. So all radicals are components, but not all components are radicals. Um, it's, hopefully I'm not confusing people too much. You've got to, you've got to kind of get uh, comfortable with some of these things um, uh, as, you, as you go along learning these characters. Every character has one and only one uh, radical. Uh, the radicals are all numbered. Those are the main things you need to know. Anyway, so ma, ha, ban, ban. And let's look how ban is written. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's the uh, Jew part, the boat part. And then one, two, three, four. That's the Sioux part. I got it again. So there's six characters in the left side, the Ju part, which means boat, and four characters in the right side, which is the Su part, that means uh, a weapon or a tool. Now, the next character is Ya. And uh, again, uh, uh, look over here in, in Mandarin. I'm not going to try to pronounce uh, the R U O with the diacritical mark over it. Um, oh, I think, no, this might not be the first time we've seen this. Oh, yeah. So if you look at the locations for these characters, clicking around. So this third character, Ban, it says that one of its locations is HSK3, and that refers to the HSK tests, which are the official tests for um, uh, certifying your proficiency in modern uh, Mandarin Chinese. In particular, it's the official test uh, by the, um, uh, the um, mainland Chinese, the Communist Chinese uh, People's Republic of China government. Um, uh, it's their test. And so it uses simplified Chinese characters, which are often, but by no means always, the same as the traditional characters. Um, uh, usually I, I note here somewhere when it, there is a difference in the traditional character, but I, I, I'm not sure of this. But anyway, HSK3 means it's a fairly common character. HSK3 probably is, is, is more or less the level that a fourth grader in China. Uh, would be proficient at, or is expected to be proficient at. Anyway, but now we're on uh, Ya, and this is HSK 6. This is a slightly higher level, but still an elementary school, maybe like fifth or sixth grade uh, level of proficiency um, for a, uh, uh, for a Chinese child, school child. Um, <clears throat> so, it's kind of good to know that the characters that you're learning have some real world value, not just in the Heart Sutra and, and in Buddhism, but are actually um, something that you would learn. In addition to the HSK test, there's also the, I forget what the acronym is, but there's a um, series of tests for um, uh, demonstrating proficiency in Japanese, for which you also need to learn these characters. Jap the Japanese people call these characters kanji. Um, so, uh, uh, that's another, that's just another piece of information that you'll see in the location uh, uh, part of this uh, uh, field here. Um, the Korean pronunciation is ya. Number of note strokes is nine. Uh, the meaning is as if like to be obedient or pliant, or of course, in this case, again, uh, the phonetic value. And the radical here is the top part. See, this is a radical for grass as we'll see in a minute, as, and, as, and as has all already been covered uh, in, the, um, in some of the previous uh, uh, videos and classes. Um, if you take this character apart, it actually has two components. If you take this top part off here, these top three characters, then that leaves this part down here. So this is the top part. Uh, this is a, um, a component you, you wouldn't encounter this as a standalone uh, character written in Chinese in a Chinese sentence. It's not a, it's not a Chinese word. 
It's just a component of a character. Um, it is the radical form of a character. I'm not going to go any further into this, but for grass, the pronunciation of this component is cho. So cho just means grass uh, in Chinese or in Sino-Korean. Um, it's this character, it, it, this radical, radical number 140. Um, the second component is a uh, standalone character in, in Chinese or in Sino-Korean. It means uh, the right direction or west. Now, there's an, uh, uh, this is not the most common way of uh, referring to the western direction, but it is the, the primary word that is used um, in uh, Chinese and Sino-Korean. Sino Sino-Korean just means that you are pronouncing the Chinese characters uh, the way the Korean people pronounce them as opposed to the way Mandarin speakers would pronounce them. Uh, and this is, a, is the standard way of referring to the right as in left versus right. Also, it um, can be used to refer to people who are right wing. Um, anyway, so this is character, uh, this is radical 30 plus two strokes. This is the gu uh, radical down here, one, two, three strokes. Let's, let's look at how this uh, component is drawn. One, two, and it has two parts as well. Now this, the first part, gu. Oh, and look at how many things are highlighted over here in the Heart Sutra when you click on gu. Lots of characters contain the component gu. Let's go back to um, uh, ya. Uh, the goo component is very, very common. Uh, this character uh, is a, a kind of a, a bit of an orphan, kind of a, a um, uh, um, I don't know, an outsider. Uh, for example, it's not in the database of uh, characters and components to write the stroke order diagram, stroke order animation out. Um, and in, in the class that I'm teaching on light, I don't assign this uh, component as something to learn and practice. Uh, you will learn to recognize it as we, as we go along. Um, uh, it does show up uh, in, uh, you see there's multiple characters here in the Heart Sutra that are highlighted, uh, but for now I'm just going to kind of pass over it. Um, it's there. Uh, and uh, you will write it many times because it is part of many many characters. Um, but I'm I'm I don't consider it particularly. It's only got two strokes. I don't consider it particularly important to um, learn to write it uh, a, a, as a standalone component or or character. Um, ma ha ban ya ba. So this is ba. This was ban. This is ba. See ban and Ah, okay. So uh, here, and also if you look up this character in a dictionary that gives the Korean pronunciation for characters, it will often be given as pa. Um, so I, I, I write them both here. Uh, the meaning of this character is, uh, again, here it is being used for its phonetic value, which is just ba. Uh, it also means wave breaker, breakers and wave, you know, as in, so it breaks a wave, and, or undulation, which is a kind of a wave, or is like a wave. It's radical uh, 85. You see it has two components. The left component is the radical form of the character for water, um, which I'll just go ahead and click on, and we'll look at and See, uh, if you look here in the Heart Sutra, many characters in the Heart Sutra have this three-stroke uh, radical uh, form of radical form of water in them, and water is su. We get another character that's pronounced Su. The, um, that's the left part of the character. The right part of the character is this other uh, character, which is, so Su here. This is a, a component, and, and, and here's how to write it on its own, but you never, you never encounter this in, um, in written uh, Chinese as a, as, a, as a separate word. When water is being written as a word, it's written uh, using uh, uh, this form here. And I'll show you another thing that you can do in, well, I'll show you, see, up here among these buttons are several buttons that end in SRCH, which is search. So you can do a Han search, which means a Hanja search. 
which means look for a, uh, a character. You could do a pin search, which means do a pinion search, which means you look for um, the pin, you, you enter in the pinion without the diacritics, just enter in the pinion with, without any diacritical marks, and it will show you every character in the database um, that has uh, that uh, uh, pinion with all the different diacritical marks. This is Eng search, which is English. So if you know the English, so if I wanted to look for the character or the radical for water, ah, also other things that the other, other characters that include water in the definition also end up showing up here. Um, but here is the standalone character. This is the reason why I went through this because if you want to write a sentence that contains the word water, this is the character that you would need to use. Um, um, also, if you, for some reason, remembered that the um, uh, uh, the character that you were looking for for water is pronounced Su, you can, this is the core search or Korean search, you can enter in Su and it will then uh, show you every uh, character that um, has a pronunciation of Su. Or for some reason here we get one that is soul. I thought it should, should it should only give an exact match. I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, you get uh, Sue for hand. Uh, these two Sues for water, which we've already seen, right? Sue for uh, oh yeah. So here's the radical for hand, and here's the standalone character for hand. Here's the uh, character for tool or weapon. Here's the standalone character for water. Here's the standalone, the, the radical character for water, the radical for hand. Uh, and then there are a couple of others that we haven't covered yet. Um, but let's go back to the Heart Sutra. Let's go back to uh, Ba. Uh, and so now we've covered the first five characters um, in the title of the Heart Sutra. Ma, Ha, Ban, Ya, Ba. And so now we're going to be getting into uh, more newer territory. Now these are um, characters and components that are part of the second lesson. Um, and let's just go right to the next one, which is Ra. Uh, and this is a pretty, uh, uh, I would say, busy uh, character. It has actually has three main components. There is a, a top component. You look down here where the stroke order animation the, the big the big green square uh, there's a top component which is this right here which is mong and this is the uh, this is the component for um, uh, that means net uh, uh, it is not it is a component it is not a, a standalone character to mean net uh, not sure yeah oh anyway if we go back to this character here uh, one of its meanings is net. So the over, so the main the character for um, ra uh, that is pronounced. So in Korean, uh, like in uh, uh, other uh, East Asian languages, um, the the r and the l sounds are uh, not distinguished from one another. In fact, the 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 the, the sound that is sometimes written by us when we're trying to write out these, um, uh, the sounds of other languages. We use an R sometimes, sometimes we'll do an L. Sometimes it sounds more like one or the other, but it's actually kind of in between. And this, I'm, I'm not a language teacher. Uh, I am not a native speaker of Chinese, Korean, Japanese, or uh, of any language other than English. Um, and there's lots of, uh, of classes you can take online and you could go to, uh, there's a, a community college near where I live that actually teaches some really good classes in, in Mandarin Chinese, which I may take someday, but I'm not taking them right now. Um, yeah, and there's lots of online classes you can take as well. And there, you know, find a native speaker. Maybe there's, you're very likely to have native speakers around you of, um, either uh, Mandarin Chinese or Korean or Japanese. But all, all I'm saying is that if you want to know how to pronounce this correctly, I am not the person to look to for that kind of information or guidance. Okay, but anyway, this is Ra. I'm going to say Ra. I'm saying it kind of with a flapped R like in, uh, in Spanish. Uh, and 
Uh, so that's the top component. Then there's a bottom left component, which is this, which is sil, uh, which means silk. And there's a reason why uh, the, uh, the uh, Chinese character, or in this case, the component form of the character, uh, is pronounced sil, because that's where the word silk comes from originally. It's from East Asia. Um, uh, and uh, yeah. And then the, um, the bottom right component is this complicated looking character, which is pronounced chu, and it means a small bird. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's given as a small bird, sometimes it's given as a short-tailed bird. Um, sometimes it might just mean any kind of bird, I don't know, but it's, a, it's a, uh, usually a small bird or a short-tailed bird is the meaning that's given. Of course, here it's being used uh, uh, as a component Oh yeah, I, was, I almost said for its phonetic value, but that's not true because it's it's part of a character that's being used for its phonetic value, All right? And this is chu. Um, and so let's look at, at each of these components again. Just look at how they're written. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And this is an important pattern to just uh, know automatically. Whenever you see a a, a box that has anything inside of it, the things that are inside of the box are written before you close the box. You draw the left side of the box, then the top and the right side of the box, then the two lines that go inside of it, and then you close the box. Two, three, four, five. Now, uh, that's the top component. That's mong, net, the uh, bottom left component is sil, which is drawn like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you'll notice here in the components uh, uh, for sil, uh, there is one component, which is yo, uh, which uh, means, um, uh, yeah, it's small or tiny. And it's written like this, one, two, three. Now, if we go back to uh, silk again, or yeah, sil again, we see that in addition to the, uh, the top part, which is yo for small, there are three little dots down here, three little um, uh, uh, dashes here. Each of those is a ju uh, component. Um, and ju is always just written like this. And notice that it has a direction. It goes from top down. It goes from left to right and, and slants, uh, slants to the right as it's going down. Um, and also, huh, you also see that when you uh, click on the Ju component, there's lots of characters in the Heart Sutra that have this little uh, Ju component in them. All right, let's go back again to uh, uh, Ra. Uh, the third component of Ra is Chu, the short-tailed bird or the small bird, which is written like this. And it itself, this is a character. It's, I, I think it's, it's, it's a fairly uh, commonly found component. Um, Seven, eight. Oh, I didn't put in how many uh, strokes it has. Yeah, it's, it's, let me count them again. So I, I have to update the database to um, it's supposed to show how many strokes each each character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, as you can kind of tell by looking at it, this, this, this has it can be broken down further, and of course, it can be right here. So the left component is uh, in, which means uh, person. Uh, this, is, this is a radical form of the character for person. Um, and it just has two strokes. This is a very common uh, component. You see that it shows up quite a bit, not as much as some other ones, but there's quite a few 
uh, characters in the Heart Sutra that have this left uh, component uh, for a person. Um, looking at uh, Chu. And so uh, <clears throat> if you look at this, it looks, this, this, the, the, the right component of Chu looks a lot like this character right here. And this is the character that's also pronounced Ju, and this means owner, master, host, the one in a dominant or presiding position. I think I must have copied that from some dictionary. Um, and, uh, uh, but one thing is you'll notice that there's only three horizontal lines, okay? Whereas in uh, Chu, in the right component of Chu, there are four horizontal lines. So over here in the components, the components uh, uh, of the of the right part of of um, Chu Chu the short-tailed bird, it is a Ju with an additional line stuck in it. Okay. Uh, so you have this horizontal line, the horizontal line, which of course is ill, uh, and look at all the uh, ills that show up in the as a component in the Heart Sutra. Okay. So the, um, this component of uh, Ra uh, is a little complicated. Anyway, let's move on to Mill. Now, uh, Mill, uh, it just has 14 strokes. It has three main components. The first component of which is myun, uh, which is uh, which itself can be broke down, broken down further. Well, let's first look at how myun is written. One, two, three. One, two, three. It has two components, um, ju, which we've already seen, and myuk, myuk, which means a cover or lid or crown. Now let's go back here. Let's, let's look at this again. So myun means roof. Um, so it's the roof. In fact, it's referred to as the roof radical. It's radical number 40. Um, this is the uh, uh, the lid radical, which is uh, radical number 14. And it's just the roof without the little Jew on top of it, without the little dot on top of it. And so it's just got two strokes. So these are both fairly common. Um, you'll notice that there are quite a few um, characters that are highlighted in yellow in, in the um, Heart Sutra uh, when we're looking at uh, Myuk. Uh, most of these are actually characters that contain Myun, uh, which is Myuk within the Ju on top of it. Um, and that's just the first component of uh, mill. The second component uh, is pill, which looks a lot like the character for mind, Shin, which we haven't actually. Do we? Okay. Yeah, it hasn't shown up yet. It shows up on its own. Uh, a couple characters down. We're almost there. Um, basically, uh, this component pill, which has a variety of meanings, it's not that common of a. Well, it's HSK three, so I guess it does show up. You know. Um, I've encountered it a lot in my um, hunting around in Chinese. Mencius, here we have a Men so Mencius is a famous Chinese philosopher. Um, he uses it. Um, <clears throat> it means surely, most certainly, always must have to shall. Supposedly, and oh, supposedly it's historically unrelated to Shin, although it obviously, you know, when you break it down into components, uh, it is basically this character, Shin, uh, the character for mind or heart. This is the heart of the Heart Sutra. Um, and then with an additional line through it. And this line here is Byol. Uh, this is a, um, uh, we've seen this before, some characters that have uh, a little uh, thing on top. Sometimes that's a Biol, and sometimes it's a Ju, and it depends on which direction it goes in. 
So if the direction is going down and to the left, then it's byo, okay? But if the direction is going down and to the right, then it's a ju. So if you see a little uh, dot or dash on top of a character, uh, sometimes it's a byo and sometimes it's a ju. And you just have to know how it's drawn uh, to know, know the difference. Uh, but sometimes byol is a full length uh, uh, stroke going the full length of the character from top to bottom and still going down and to the left. So if you take the character Shin from mine and put this almost kind of like a slash through it, um, it makes the character Pill. Um, which is a component of the character mill, which is the character we're looking at right now. The final component of mill is the character for bug or insect or snake sometimes. Sometimes it can be in snake or an animal. Usually it's an insect or a bug. Um, I don't know what's the difference between an insect and a bug. Well, anyway, so if you take this character and break it down into its components, this this which is this is a character standalone character in its own right. Um, this is a very interesting character. This means among in in the midst. One of my favorite um, uh, Zen calligraphies is calligraphy by Zen master Hakuin, in which this character figures very prominently. Uh, here's how you write this character: one, two, three. Forward. And remember when I uh, I said that if there is uh, uh, if you have a box with something in it, you always draw the contents of the box before you close the box. But in this case, the line goes through the box, and so you draw the you draw the box and put the line through it. Um, so the box in this case is the character Goo. The line through it is the character uh, gon, gon, which just means a rod or number one. This, so if you look down here, you'll see uh, that it shows up quite a bit as a component. Uh, it doesn't usually show up as a standalone character in its own right, uh, but it is a fairly common component. All right, so now we've, oh, uh, let's uh, just look a little bit more at uh, Chung, Chung, the character for insect. So it has uh, uh, this component, which we've now looked at. It has this component, which is not really a component. It's just a stroke. Um, it doesn't have, it, it's not in the Hansi writer database. It doesn't really even have a, um, uh, a, a pronunciation associated with it. It's just a stroke. It's a rising stroke, and it would, and that's kind of interesting. Let's see, let's see, is this a? Let's see, in Chung, this is, oh yeah, this, oh yeah, goes right here. This, it's this part of the Chung, and it is rising, and it goes from right to left. Let's watch. Let's watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this ju we've seen before already, uh, but this part, this rising stroke <clears throat> is different. And it's not really a component. It doesn't really show up that much. It is only uh, in the heart sutra, heart sutra at least, it only shows up in characters that have this chung, chung, character as one of their components. Um, let's see. Now let's look at, at how it's all put together. Just review one more time. This is Myon, first component. This is Pill, second component. And this is Chung, the um, uh, uh, third component. I don't think, let's see, this is Jung, Jung is the um, the character for among or in, uh, in the midst of. I think I didn't give the pronunciation of that. Um, 
So those are all the those are the, the main components of the character for mill. If you're going to and then to write the whole character together, first is uh, the top part. Let me look at that again. This is uh, myan myan, which means roof. All right, that's right, myan myan pill chung. Okay, all right. And this is what you should do yourself. What I'm doing right now is clicking on different parts, going back and forth, looking at the whole character, then looking at the components, and sometimes breaking down and look at the components of the components, the subcomponents. Sometimes you can break it down even further. Um, but then you want to also look and see how it's all put together. So this is the yun part, the roof. Then there's the pill part in the middle. And then on the bottom is the uh, chung part, the bug down at the bottom. And each stroke is written the same way as it is when you just write the component on its own. But of course, when the components are combined to form a character, the components have to be compressed uh, and sometimes moved around a little bit so that they fit into the same size square. All right, so that's a little uh, complicated of a component. The next one is uh, da. Uh, so it's ma, ha, ban, ya, ba, ra, mil, ta, or da. The D and the T, the in, in uh, uh, it's, it's hard to make those sounds for an English speaker, it's hard to make those sounds exactly the same way a Korean person would would say them, and 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 the and the way it's pronounced is sometimes dependent upon the um, the, the context. Um, I've always been taught to pronounce this in the heart church as ta mil ta. It's written with a uh, if you know if you know Hangul, you know that this uh, is written as a da, uh, but it's pronounced ta in this case. Uh, and uh, it is a fairly common uh, character in, in Chinese. Uh, it means many, much, or more. Um, and it is made up of uh, two copies of the character that is a, the component of this character, which is the character Sok for night or dusk. Um, so if you write this character twice, then you make the character for Ta. This is suck. One, two, three. And notice that the second stroke uh, is another example of a stroke that changes uh, direction fairly abruptly um, uh, when it's written. Go back to the uh, main character. And you see this character shows up only, oh yeah, there's, a, there's um, one other character in the Heart Sutra that contains this component. Uh, which we won't get to for a while in the class. Um, it's later on. <clears throat> so this character, uh, Ta, uh, is just two of those sucks written on top of each other. And again, in order to get them to fit into the same size square as one of those uh, um, sucks by itself, you have to compress them. Uh, all right. Now, uh, the next character is uh, Shin, uh, or I sometimes I'll say Shin. It's, it, it, in Korean, it's written as Shim, Shim, with an M at the end. Um, in uh, Chinese, it has an N. In Mandarin, it has an N at the end. Um, so, and this character is just got uh, four strokes, and it's written like this. And there's, you'll see many different ways of, of writing it. Um, as long as you get the one stroke out on the left, the long stroke that goes down to the bottom, one little stroke on the top, and another one on the right, uh, people will probably recognize you. See, this this down here, 
doesn't really look that much like, and I'm going to make the screen bigger. See, and this, this is a different font from the way that the stroke order animation is written. You see this, this looks actually quite a bit different, but still recognizable as the same character, I think. Um, and then the last character uh, in the title of the Heart Sutra is the character for Sutra, uh, which is pronounced as Gyung. This is another example of the EO uh, sound, which is not pronounced EO. Uh, it's pronounced more like uh, 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 it's not pronounced as O, oh, uh, but if you pronounce it as Gyong, um, especially if you're, if you say Mahabanya Bara Milta Shim Gyong, uh, people will know what you're, you know, if you chant it like that, it's okay. But actually the pronunciation is more like Gyong than Gyong. But don't take it from me because I am not a native speaker of Korean by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and it has three components, uh, one of which we've already seen. Sil, remember Sil? Uh, and you can see in the characters that are highlighted, it shows up a couple, few other places in the Heart Sutra. So that's the left component. The right component is uh, a little complicated, but not that bad. Uh, it is this character, Gyung, which means flowing water. And uh, and it's written like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven strokes. And it has three components. It has a component on top here, see? This middle component, which is these three uh, uh, hooked or three bent lines, and then this component on the bottom. So let's look. So we've already seen ill, uh, and again, just to uh, here are all the places where ill shows up as a component in the Heart Sutra. Ill shows up twice in the Heart Sutra as a standalone character. Each time, it's it's part of a two-character word, ilche, which means all and this is actually the character that uh, these two characters are the two characters that you'll find a third time in the japanese heart sutra it's inserted somewhere i forget where um uh just say all um anyway let's get back to uh young the components of young and in particular the components of young so so the 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 right hand component of young is also pronounced Gyeong in Sino-Korean. Uh, and the first component of this Gyeong, the Gyeong in the means flowing water, is just ill. The second component is Chun, which means it's, a, it's an, an older form of the character for river. So this is just a character that means river. And it's kind of, you know, it's three wavy lines um, written like this, one, two, three. And now the last component, and this is the end of this, um, this is the last component that we're covering in the title of the Heart Sutra. This is Gong. This is a character, it's a, a pretty common component. Uh, it's also a, a very uh, a common word in Chinese. It just means work or worker or skill, profession, trade, craft, labor. It's a radical, radical 48. Pronunciation is gong. And here's how it's written. There's one line on the top, one, one line going down, and one line on the bottom, three strokes. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. I just want to, uh, if you've made it through this video, if you've made it this far in the class, I want to congratulate you. Um, the, uh, the first part uh, the first three months of the class that I'm teaching uh, on the Heart Sutra only uh, mostly deals with the title of the Heart Sutra and the mantra, the Ajay Ajay Bada Ajay Bada Sung Ajay Moji Sabaha, or as people sometimes say it in closer to the original Sanskrit, uh, Gate Gate Pada Gate Pada Sung Gate Bodhisvaha. Um, the first three months of the class, that's all we cover except for the first three characters of the first line, which is the name of Avalokiteshvara, Guanjaje. So uh, 
uh, congratulations on making it this far. Uh, I look forward to um, seeing you online if you sign up for my class, um, which I would encourage you to do uh, through my uh, Patreon page. Um, uh, but feel free to watch these videos, you know, um, in, in the recorded form um, uh, on YouTube. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you think, you know, there's something I should cover uh, um, or cover differently than I am. Um, and, uh, you know, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.